This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Human beings are pretty remarkable animals, but as a species, we do have this nasty habit of occasionally killing everything. The dodo bird, the passenger pigeon, the West African black rhino, and my personal favorite, the thylacine, better known as the Tasmanian tiger. I've been borderline obsessed with these animals and their history for the past few years. It's actually a dream of mine to go to Tasmania someday and film a short documentary about them. But until then, here are five weird facts about the thylacine. My name is Jason Miller, and you're watching Five Weird Animal Facts. Number one, the name is a bit misleading. The Tasmanian tiger is in fact from Tasmania, so they got that part right, but it is definitely not a tiger. And although it looks very similar to a small wolf, it's not a canine either. Believe it or not, it's a marsupial, the largest carnivorous marsupial to live in modern times. The name Tasmanian tiger is due to the animal's distinctive stripes along its back, and it looks like a canine due to a phenomenon known as convergent evolution. Convergent evolution occurs when two completely unrelated species evolve parallel characteristics in order to adapt to similar environments or fill an ecological niche. A classic example of this is the emerald tree boa in South America and the green tree python in New Guinea and Australia. Two species from completely different families that are superficially very similar. Check out this comparison between the skull of a thylacine and the skull of a grey wolf. These animals are in completely different orders but still have evolved nearly identical skeletal structures. How freaking cool is that? Number two. No, really, they're marsupials. Even though they don't exactly look like kangaroos or wombats, they do exhibit the trait that makes marsupials so easily identifiable. Females lack the ability to grow a placenta and raise their babies in a pouch on their abdomen. Interestingly, thylacines are one of only two marsupials in which pouches occur in both males and females of the species, the other being the water opossum of South America. Number three, hunted to extinction. When European settlers arrived in Tasmania, they did what European settlers did best in Australia. They brought over hella non-native species. The introduction of wild dogs created unnatural competition for this top-level predator. And when colonists began farming sheep, a new food source became available to them. Thylacines began occasionally hunting lambs at night, which made the farmers a little bit grumpy. The number of sheep actually slaughtered by Tasmanian tigers was greatly over-exaggerated, but that didn't stop government officials from placing a bounty on the animal's head. Long story short, the thylacine was systematically exterminated. Time for my dumb opinion. Maybe the money spent on paying bounties to exterminate the thylacine could have been spent on, uh, I don't know, making more secure fences to keep your lambs safe, you idiots. The last known thylacine to be killed in the wild was shot by a man named Wilf Batty, who is most famous for wearing dumb hats and shooting endangered species while his dog silently judges him. The last captive thylacine, nicknamed Benjamin by the media even though it was most likely a female, was trapped in 1933 and sent to the Hobart Zoo. She lived at the zoo for three years before passing away on September 7th, 1936. Official protection of the species was put into place by the Tasmanian government on July 10th, 1936, 59 days before Benjamin died in captivity. She was the last known thylacine in existence. 50 years later, the species was officially classified as extinct. Number four, or are they? Technically, yeah, they're most likely super extinct. Even though there have been thousands of sightings and blurry out of focus pictures taken, there has been zero conclusive evidence that thylacines are still alive today. Let me be clear, I'm an optimist and I really, really want a hidden population of thylacine to be living and reproducing in the forests of Tasmania. I also really, really want Leah Marie Johnson to fall in love with me. Both scenarios are equally likely. Number five. Reversing extinction. If there are indeed no living thylacines left on the planet, then our best chance of seeing one again is through cloning. Starting in 1999, researchers have taken tissue samples from preserved thylacines in hopes of resurrecting the species. The good news is there is a chance of this happening, since scientists at the University of Melbourne have restored functionality of some genetic material and successfully sequenced a complete mitochondrial genome. The bad news is that we're still a long ways away from an actual cloning project. This is because thylacines have no close relatives alive today that could act as a surrogate mother. Their closest living relatives are the quoll, the numbat, and the Tasmanian devil, all of which are in completely different families. This would be like trying to clone a human using a lemur as a surrogate mother. So until we're able to clone animals artificially without the use of a surrogate, it looks like the Tasmanian tiger will remain extinct. But science is progressing now faster than it ever has before, so who knows? Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what weird animals you want to see in future episodes. Like and share this video, and subscribe to Animal Bites TV for more awesome animal things and stuff. Check out all my social media nonsense, and make sure to also check out my vlog channel, Jason Miller Vlogs, where I'm going to be posting stuff every Thursday. Until next time, my friends, my name is Jason Miller, and I'll see you next Monday on 5 Weird Animal Facts.